back to the Lambacon Island. Here you can enjoy delicacies such as beautiful hamlets full of farms and fields, a capital with massive development, a royal forest where you can get lost, and a university where you can go to college to get some knowledge. My oh. name is Koifish, and this is the second part of the Lambacana Island Adventure, where I play as the glorious Lambacana Dynasty on the beautiful island of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. When you feel lonely, you go wanka. The goal of this series is to get this island to be as tall as possible and to boom the development to that of something the world has never seen. Only then will we become none other than the Chakravarti, the man that will unify all of India. To do that, we will need <laughs> the Deccan Empire, the Bengal Empire and Rajasthan. That's not gonna be easy, but <laughs> we'll have to do our best. There ain't no way like the koi fish way. And the Kofish way is say, hello, it would be great if you could leave a like and a comment on this video. And also, while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Let's begin. In the last episode, we built up this kingdom. And I say, we really built it up. This is like a complete hub of development. You look at our side of the world and it's all yellow. You look at the rest of the world and it's, ah, it looks like someone took a piece in the snow. Also, we just discovered battle bets. That's great because we can take our massive gold and dump it into getting, that's right, keeps. Which is also today's spawn. <laughs> that would have been funny. And we also got mangonels. And, and, and my knight and my whole sister had a baby out of wedlock. Well, god damn it, get married then. Oh no, which whole sister was it? Um... It doesn't matter, you just marry one of them. I hope this one was the right one. And then I'm gonna introduce you to the character. Our last character we played as was none other than Lamba Kasapa the fourth. Yeah, no, he uh, he died from a seizure. And then I seized all of the land and I'm playing as Lama Kakuka. Kakuka the Gracious. Who is not only very beautiful, but also completely off his medicine. But talking about being off your medicine. With the new DLC, we can visit the university. That's gonna cost a lot of gold though. So... Let's save up and uh, we can go study. And our new lifestyle. We're already all the way down here to being a scholar. That means we have sanctioned loopholes. So buying some claims for land could be good. Maybe it's time we leave the island and, you know, start getting at it. I'll pick anatomical studies. I want to stay healthy for as long as possible because that's the name of the game. Staying healthy 3. <laughs> Let's look at our innovations. I want to get to high medieval. The best goal for us would probably be to move away from our current succession. We have confederate partition. Now I would want to get primogeniture. This is that the oldest child gets all of the land. The rest get absolutely nothing. Alternatively, ultimogeniture, which is a hard word to say, but basically the youngest child gets the title. I want to get this, but we can't. We need the primogeniture innovation and that's in late medieval. That's so far away. We'll try to move over to partition, which is literally hereditary rule, which we're pretty close to getting, if I'm not mistaken. It will only take nine years. Great. Well, enough talking. Let's go to college. I want to go to my own college because that saves me money. I'll also get a bunch of study material. Now here's where real life and coinfish differs. I went to university, but I never bought any course literature. That's what the internet is for. And if you think that I'm being dishonest, um, I used to get books from very dubious sites online, which I don't recommend. And I'd print them out. And that's how I learned how to bookbind. Very cool. I can either be a goliardic, which is basically party and have fun, but study hard, eat lard. That's what the life is about. Now let's go to university. And if you're wondering why literally everyone is in their nighty pajamas, uh, that's one of the rules I used enacted. I'm a lunatic. The no arraignment law. If it wasn't for the fact that I had an editor that does not like censoring stuff all the time, uh, you'd be seeing a lot of Indian titties and, and dickies around here. And we don't want to see that. I am finally at the gates of the Anuradhpura, the renowned university that I literally own. All knowledge is collected inside these hallowed halls, and the scholars of repute from all over the world, but mostly Sri Lanka, assemble here. And of course, major centers of cultures are also active markets and offer all the distractions a student could ever need. Now my goal is to get to studiousness level 4. This is a high chance of upgrading my education trait, going from the highest mastermind philosopher to the new highest, which is incredibly strong. So let's put our backs into it and start studying. Today, Sean has asked me and Hemavit to take up on the pleasing sides on the topic of trigonometry. Uh, I like to trigger people and, and sometimes that's not nometry. But because I'm so learned, let me begin from the Buddha Vanka. As everyone knows, you're stupid and I'm smart. I win the debate. Also, uh, god damn, that's a glorious beard, my dude. 
This man is a Tamil guy and I think I know the Tamil language. I'll give it a good try though. Straight up pick it up no problem. But I'm lazy and that's getting me really really stressed. God damn it I'm such a little sucker up huh. I'm such a little, little, little cool studios guy. My studies into my own religion has confronted me with many questions. Is faith supposed to complement by reason or not? Does faith only deal with the unseen or not? Yes or no? My head hurts. No. Uh, maybe, maybe I can figure this out. It all makes sense and I got a book called Yes and No. <laughs> it can be both. Wonderful. But uh, these books I already have, they're already way greater, so I'll stick on to them. There's a guest speaker. It's the Grandmaster from my Holy Order. Well, we already maxed out, so we'll get three perk points. Huge. And a high chance of upgrading our education. Tell you what, perhaps it's time for me to go into more of a, well, relaxed lifestyle. I am quite stressed after all, so maybe having a bit of a drink or two couldn't hurt. Well, this was a great time. I've impressed all my teachers and maybe I could get one of them to come over here. And I became an erudite oracle! Let's go! Look at that! That is the new level 5 education trait. Immensely powerful. Look at that! 10% development growth, insane temple buildings being built, more intrigue and learning lifestyle experience, as well as 10 learning hands down. That is insane. Tell you what, this eager reveler of a dwarf, you're hired, you're hired. Well, I got exactly what I wanted. A bunch of perks so that my constitution can become stronger. I can now become celibate, which would split the realm way less. But I'm an eagle reveler, so I don't want to, no. I used that to stop porting, but I can't stop porting because I like to get my, you know, I like to wet my whistle and something else. God damn it. But holy macaroni, 38 learning. That is filthy. That's downright filthy. And I can return in 20 years. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, and uh, people pay me gold for my religion. That's great. But I'm really stressed, so maybe we'll just have a cool feast. In our main holding, as that increases the development after we're done. Let's go feast time. I'm so generous, you could call me Mr. Feast. Anyways, here's me blowing up infrastructure. Goodbye, stress. Hello, feeling better. If you ever feel stressed, just host a party. And make sure it's like very intricate. Don't do that, that's just gonna stress you out so much, bro. I'm so sorry, I'm just gaslighting you. We're very close to being healthy. Now with the keeps built, we can make our holdings even stronger. First of all, that's right, better grain. No pay, no grain. And gosh damn it, we're making so much gold. I'll just make a bit more. The Ratnapura mines will be Ratnapura mined more, giving us even more gold. And we just got headed to the rule. That means that we can actually change our succession. We just need to get these vassals to like me. But what if I were to, you know, sway them? I could also use revoke their title. But that's exactly what I'm gonna do. That's hilarious. No need to sway. This is completely legal. We're just making sure it goes to someone that's a bit more, you know, qualified. That's it. Damn, if I would have known this sooner, uh, I would have done it. <laughs> Now I own the entire island, so I don't know who could oppose me. No one. You're goddamn right. Now we're moving over to partition. This at least should keep it within the same area, but uh, hopefully I'm not messing myself up here. Very nice. Now to give away all of these holdings, because, spoiler, we have a few too many. Now this is why I love playing Thor. You just can build whatever you want, nothing's stopping you. You don't have to go out and raid, you just wait, and then boom, the money comes to you anyways. Wind furnaces. A lot of them. Not only do these give gold, but also make my troops so much better. And I get night effectiveness that stacks all the way up to 8%. Add so much money and... Uh, now that woman's dead. I don't know why I killed her, but she's married to... No, oh, my teacher, of course, the Dr. Dwarf. Hello, Dr. Dwarf. Uh, probably best of going somewhere else, yeah. <laughs> From what I can see here, they're really starting to grow in the area. I could perhaps buy a claim, but it's just a kingdom, not an empire. Maybe we'll see big empires forming, and, and from that, we may forge our new realm. Now someone's trying to murder me. Could it be this man, my half brother who I foolishly invited in? Probably. Well, better just kill him to make sure. What's the development at currently? Oh yeah, 44. Let's look at our comparison here. 39. Hey, we're starting to pull away from them. That's good to see. And for a measly 300. I can fund natural philosophy, giving me even more development. Let me just show you what we're working with when it comes to development bonuses. Yeah, that's a whole lot. <laughs> Let me just build up my holdings and I'll come back to you right when something interesting happens. Currently, I have some really, really strong pikes. These guys deal a whopping 64 damage from a base damage of 28. 
These are the anti-cavalry archers. And they also slap hard in the jungle and in the forest, which happens to be a lot of the Indian terrain. The rest of it happens to be plains and some hills. Now if I can avoid fighting in the hills and stick to just plains and jungles, then I'm really thinking that war elephants could do a lot of damage. In jungles they slap even harder, but in mountains, desert mountains and wetlands they are absolutely terrible. But that's not a problem, I heard a guy Hannibal pull this off and Going from 250 damage to just 150, that's still a lot of damage. So in this region, I'm going to boost my archers. And in this region, I'm going to boost, that's right, my elephant cavalry. If I had any. But for now, we're just really enjoying the fact that we are making big, big back. My air is also in prison. I should probably, uh... Wait, I have him in prison. He's in my prison. He's been in prison for three years. Hey, come out of prison, bro. It's fine. You little lunatic, hey, you take that after your father. We also pick up extort subjects. This is great because it's just gonna be even more money. I should also say that we have an incredibly strong holy order. <laughs> These guys are absolutely insane. 4,000 troops, four holdings, and a bigger bank than gosh damn, there's more money than I have. Did I see that correctly? Do I have a, I have a giant jester? That's so funny. I wonder when we're gonna allow people to wear clothing again, but um, I guess not. Holy, Pitti gets greatly improved development of 10 years, which is a massive plus 50%. That's huge. That's my capital. Look, look at this development. That's huge. That is insane. That's insane. That is, that is a whopping 6.5 every goddamn month. Holy macaroni. That is, uh, that's something, all right. Hey, we got Royal Prerogative. Nice. Almost read that as Royal Prerogi. That means that we can get way more troops. These guys do have a high unraised maintenance cost, but we should have enough money by now. But first, let me get the first Light Horseman Regiment. These goddamn swift horses, huh? I'm, I'm telling you, this is the future. And we're gonna station them here. Give them an extra... Oh my god. That, that takes them from, from a base of 22 to 66. Holy heck. That's strong! Venture to the Holy Lands and you will find redemption. Do not delay, Siddhartha is waiting for you. Yeah, listen, I gotta go to pilgrimage right now, god damn it, leave! Pilgrimage it is. Tell you what, I can do it. I, I thought we've already done that. We haven't even consecrated the bloodline, well, pff, allow me to do it then. He's a saint! <laughs> Never gets old. Unlike this guy, god damn, you're 61 but you keep shugging. You're also known as the savior. Kakua is here to deliver us all. Mm, call this guy Amazon because he delivers. And I also gain back a whole lot of gold. God damn it. We're rich. Time to reinvest this by getting some armored footmen. Like a lot of them. And a bunch of horsemen as well. The heavy footmen are gonna go to Batikola. And gosh darn it, do they deal a lot of damage. But also boost up the pikes. Especially those that are stationed in the good area. Well, there goes my fortune. And my orb is gonna be really expensive to raise. God damn, my technologies are going so fast. We just unlocked Royal Prerogative. And that means we just have Arch Saddle left. And it's gonna be like, what, four years? That's no thing. Then we have to wait 30 years? Bruh. Tell you what, it's obvious that my technology is about to be maxed out. Maybe if I unlock this, I will unlock High Medieval earlier. And uh, we could get Crossbowmen by then, so... Tell you what, I'll hold off on doing any wars, because I just had an idea. My goal is still to become Chakravarti, the man that unites the whole world. Or, well, India. And the whole development thing, this won't be affected by me conquering more areas. And my technologies is based on the average development of the Taminhala counties. Meaning nothing is stopping me from conquering more areas without spreading my culture. Instead opting for a cultural acceptance route. Meaning, I should use all my prestige to actually start conquering. I even have a subjugation CB, which is pretty damn huge. On top of that, we have the ability to change the laws to partition, meaning we're able to keep it. Only downside is we get more vassals, and that's people I have to care about, but that's also more monthly income from taxes. Tell you what, I think it's high time we pull something off here. I can use my immense piety to buy claims. Now the problem is I can only do it for duchies, not the entire kingdoms, as I have a kingdom title myself. But this is just one duchy. I can buy a claim on the Raj here, who I'm pretty sure is the entire area. So let's do that. I should have this. Why? I don't know, bro. Ask the gods. And now, I'll just simply claim it. The first war of the Lambakana kingdom. 
The island! So peaceful! Now plagued by the drums of war. I won't even have to use my own troops by the looks of it. I can probably just pull in the Holy Order. But their faith is not hostile, so... I guess they will wait for a bit longer. I just wanna see what this army can do. Let's see about raising it. God damn, I'm still making money? There's enemies in our territory? Now this is a force that outnumbers us. But we are fighting in planes, so... My insane light cavalry will probably make short work of them. I'm worried. My army's never been tested and uh, this is quite the force. To battle! For glory! For Lambacana! Oh yeah, oh yeah, we are crushing them! And we have one pro- Oh ho oh, ho, that was not a matter of- That was no matter at all! The battle of Padinseda! Look, the pikes completely slaughtered them! And the horsemen excelled at their duties! But the armored footmen were countered! But alas, it was no matter. Holy macaroni. That's what I'm talking about. The Lambacana has spilt blood. Now there is no end to our conquest. I have become destroyer of worlds. With that said though, we do have mangonels instead of onagers, so we should probably get some new ones. I also like how high the development is in these areas. We can easily stand in it with all of our troops. Oh, but they're coming back. We must oppose them. Quickly. Crushed. Boom. That's the area taken. Glorious! The Rosh of Panthea Nadu is ours. Hey, our first vassal. He absolutely hates us, but I hate him too. I think the best bet would be to offer guardianship to his heir, convert his culture and his faith, and then do the impossible. Or rather the, well, not so popular. We we'll kill him. We'll kill the current ruler. I just hope he won't find out. Look at, <laughs> look at how bountiful this area is compared to mine. That's it's so many holdings. This county is insane. I got my county. It's just these two holdings. Damn. Damn, I really messed up. All right. That puts us bordering more people. But I could subjugate all of Shira. That's nice. Could I get a claim on this area by just buying it instead? I'm really gunning for Tamila Khan. But I just keep buying claims and we'll get to war against the whole world. We can also offer vassalage. This is not looking that impossible. If I could get the area, then, well, a religious exemption offer and... Uh, that's not too bad, is it? We could probably make something happen if we were to later move on to a diplomatic education and get true ruler. Huh, interesting. If I could steal enough land to get the Tamila Kam kingdom, then this would be very easy. I don't aim to rule with one religion in mind. I'm perfectly fine with having my religion rule here and the rest here. I mean, India is not a country. It's, it's, it's more like a subcontinent cosplaying as one. Tell you what, these three wars will do perfectly fine. One should not overextend. All right, lads, come on. Well, that, that area taken. Very nice. 100%. Love to see it. Oh, is this a holy site? No, it's not. But it's letting me build a Birradeshwar temple. Oh, wow. That's quite the temple. I'll build it. I want to keep this holding. It's really nice. This holding, though, which is a temple holding, I'll give to a... I'll give it to this guy. Damn, I want to hold that. That's good development. And really nice buildings. The Tamils quite like us already as is. I think our culture comes from them. That's why we're called the Tabinhala. But I'd also like to keep going with this. Using my steward to increase the development of my holding. Let's not focus on that. War it is. Well, that's the man captured. 100%. Surprise, my dear friends. You stand no chance against my mighty horde of cavalry. Damn, getting the cavalry was probably my best decision so far. And I guess I will spread my religion. It doesn't hurt and uh, the more people that follow my religion, the more people will actually pay me money. God damn, they killed my son? The prince of fashion? Mysterious circumstances, huh? Well, don't kill this guy. Kakua, my, my, my beloved grandson. Do we not have a doctor? We don't. God damn. You're living a dangerous life here. God damn, I love it. I love battling. We've been at peace for so long. No! Stop who's killing all my kids! Someone's really out there killing everyone. But I do unlock another legacy. Now we're already maxed out on erudition. So we're going down law and we'll get delegated authority. More opinion and more tax as well as levies from powerful vassals. What I'm actually looking for is home estates. That one extra domain limit is huge if you think about it. I'm at my table reading through some of the reports on how the war's going. But suddenly, Georgie, my cat, hop up beside me, chasing the war from a sunbeam, and curls up contending beside my work. I reach out to give his grave fur a stroke, and he stretches langorously in response. A mighty stretch. Too mighty. Georgie rolls over and completely falls off the table, landing on his feet. Oh my god. With a hoggedy glare, as if this was somehow my fault, he saunters away. Ha <laughs> you little foolish cat! 
I have a dopey cat. Oh my lord. Someone over at Paradox really loves cats. Well, I just got a bunch of land. Thank you very much. And as foolishly as I think this might be, I'm gonna create this kingdom of Tamilkam. Now a double king. And that means that if I offer Vassalage, he's willing to say yes, as long as he's religiously protected. But if I can take my powerful vassals, which I now have some more of, and make them actually like me more by simply injecting them with a bit of gold and demanding that they turn to my religion. And just to make sure we really get this home, we'll have a great feast. Yeah, that's a great idea. If I can get my powerful vassals to like me, but that increases the chance that these people are willing to join me. We'll also take my steward and have him promote cultural acceptance with the Tamils. Welcome, my homies. Hope that everyone I want showed up. A great and lovely feast. Hopefully that got a bunch of opinion to those people that we need. And I just became avaricious, giving me even more taxes. That's a nice number. 696, 696. And let's see if anyone wants to actually join me as a vassal. I'm mostly looking at the Shera kingdom. I'd like to get them in, but they need to like me a little bit more. And he's stubborn. That's a problem. We'll send this man a gift. Oh, we are so close. If only my people here would like me a little bit more. We also have the option to subjugate this woman. It would be very easy and would give me a lot of land, but I want to subjugate this guy instead. He holds nine titles. This woman holds four. This man is way more powerful, so he's who I want to go for. I'll buy a claim on this place and a claim on that spot. And let's go to war. Raise the lads. One group of lads goes here. The other group will go here. Well, that's one area taken. Thank you very much. And we got a steel laminar armor. Holy macaroni. That's a wonderful piece of kit. I put that on before someone kills me. Holy heck. Wait, I hold, I hold how many duchies? Oh no, I didn't know that. I should probably give them away. There we go, another area taken. And with that, I guess another duchy too, because yeah, I control that. Tell you what, we'll give that to this man, my marshal. I sort of see as the warden of India at this point. I mean, I'm also Indian, but like he rules, he rules India for me. I just want to be in Sri Lanka. I just want to be a little Sri, Sri Lankan island boy. And I can also vassalize this guy. Very cool. Low feudal obligations, but no bloodshed. Look at that. Now here's what I'm thinking. This area is huge. And I can subjugate all of it in one war. He's also going through a bit of a civil war. And there's one vassalization per lifetime. And I have a sneaking suspicion that my lifetime is about to end. So... Let's do some goddamn subjugation. That would make him a vassal. That's huge. Let's do it. And I should be wary that my people are very tired of war at this rate. But I'm not. But my people are. I should also check that my next heir... Yeah, he does not have any kids as of yet. Well, he has one kid, but that's not his. Did my great-grandson get cocked? I hate to see it. Hopefully, we'll capture him with this war. <laughs> nope, but we stole his tapestry. <laughs> We can also see about reforming the culture a little bit. Let me see what I can find. Fervent temple builders will be replaced with legalistic. Laws are cheaper to enact. Just is a better trait. Vassals have a higher acceptance of rightful criminal punishments. Lose prestige per dread. We gain way more tyranny, but also cheaper titles and way higher vassal limit. Perfect for what I'm about to pull off. Another option would be the ruling cost. It's very Indian. Different culture, peasant, and populist factions are less common. But I feel like we can deal with the factions. And this lowers the rate at which we gain cultural acceptance. It's way better to just, well, get people to culturally accept our rule. Let's go through a legal way. We will become legalistic. I think I just conquered all of this. The Lankana Orisa Subjugation War. All of these vassals are now mine. Lambakana has grown immensely. Now let's check. With the Tamils, our acceptance is quite high. But with the Orinia people here, it's, it's not terrible. But ruling these people, <sighs> rather tricky. I can scarcely believe it myself, but we're earning a hundred gold per month with these massive holdings. That is glorious. Glorious, I say. A hundred gold a month. That is amazing. And I'm on my way to get to the Khan Empire. I only need a bit more and I feel like we could pull this off. To unify this under one empire would be magnificent. Wonderful. And I could subjugate her, but I've already done a subjugation war. Now literally the rest of the land belongs to these people. So if I could seize their largest holdings, then I could easily steal their land. Now by a claim on this man's realm, it would cut a swath through his area and connect ours. Let's do it. And while we're at it, I'm a worry man. And this ugly boy, he deserves to be taken. Well, his land. Oh my god, that sounded way too sexual than I'm... <laughs> that sounded way more sexual than I wanted it to do. God damn, he's a techno priest and a little gnome boy. 
Sheesh! Either way, we're gonna steal that place, okay? Thank you. That's gonna make for some glorious land. We'll also get some of the strongest allies we have in on this one. A bit of both, a bit of both. But something tells me, with my massive amounts of gold, that I don't have to worry about this anymore. I'm pulling in a hundred stacks. Raise the lands. Let me show you what these bad boys can do. First troop goes up here, second in here, and uh, third in there. Glorious! But goddamn is my game suffering. <laughs> Is a bit more troops than Crusader Kings can handle, huh? My, my, my mouth is a bit bloated. Bro, please, you know, you, your health is fine. You, you, you're fine. You've been losing weight for how long? Well, we're doing a Seneschal land survey, which is even more taxes. You usually aren't too fond of taxes, but when they're paid to me... It's a different story, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's a very good prisoner I just took. Not that she's like a good prisoner, but like, it's a good prisoner to have. I'm sure she's great at being in prison too. Real nice, well behaved, doesn't yell that much. Unlike me, that is. <laughs> no, my my son! Did we, oh no, he was a commander! Well, we got a rush food war banner. I'm gonna burn it. And we're gonna take the lamb. Son might be dead, but land's still mine. Of course, that won't bring my boy back, but... Um, Let's make the whole loss process feel, you know, a bit less bad. Hey there, tech priestess, don't worry. I'll hand you back your own land. The Rosh of Ratapadi is yours. Here's 150 gold for the trouble. Also, consider converting. I mean, you don't have to, but uh, maybe, your, maybe your dwarf husband wants to. Sure, for a wee cook. Why not? And that's the second war one. Glorious. Damn, we're really conquering India. My man Kakua was just holding himself back. I mean, he is called the Gracious after all. Goodness gracious, great conquering. That's not nearly enough what we need to get the Empire, but once I have it, oh boy. Hey, sponsored 30 successful inspirations in one game. Lovely. Holy m what? I sent out this random woman, not expecting much, to Burma. <laughs> I take the bulky bundle into my hands and loosen the cords before peeling layer after layer of fabric. Inside is an artifact unlike anything I've ever seen. The bejeweled royal throne has been made in the image of the legendary throne of the Persian kings from the Shah. <laughs> its ebony frame is adorned by an uncountable amount of turquoises. I don't know what that is, but damn, that's an uncountable amount. What a lovely share. Oh, th uh, that's insane. Diplomacy and stewardship per fame level. And as you can see, my fame level is maxed out. That means that from established, there's like plus five to both stats. Development growth in the capital. Not a modifier, but straight up growth. That's huge. What the heck? What the hell? Papa got himself a new throne. Sheesh. And he can't break because it's illustrious. Holy moly. Daddy got himself a new sitting chair. I like how this region is developing because like, yeah. The leech has like a baller share. Let's get even more development going. Well, one Dutch you taken. Nothing personal, kid. Hello there, ma'am. Here's your holding. <laughs> Enjoy. Also, here's your new religion. Enjoy. Also, here's a priest to ensure that you follow the religion. Enjoy. <laughs> How many people could we get in here and demand conversion for? A lot. A lot, it seems. It's just something about being a literal saint that makes people go like, damn, you should probably follow that guy's religion. Thank you very much. We're almost dead, but not really. But um, we could kill over at any time. We're 78 after all, and <laughs> we're not hasty. This man, the sleeper, the sleeper, the eeper, the, the, the big old creeper. We can steal one of his duchies that has exactly what we need to form the empire. It also has Canada, which happens to be one of my favorite countries. So let's seize his holding and simply steal it. Raise the lads and saunter on in. We'll go for his capital and we'll seize some of his top holdings. Oh no, that's not good at all. But I think I can pull this off. We need to steal this area as quickly as possible within a year. I have a bad feeling that all of this is gonna get split up. I need to control the main island, but more than that, I need to control this area. It's most of the Decon Empire, and if I get that, we'll at least manage to wrest that under control. We did it! He's captured! Steal the land! Disband the troops! Give this to him, and demand conversion. And now, before it's too late, I create the Empire of Decon! Create it! I am the Samrat! Lama Kakua Samrat the Gracious! Holy macaroni! Kakua, you, you proved yourself a worthy ruler and you pulled it off. Sri Lanka is safe. You did it. You did it, my boy. You're the best. Woohoo! While holding an empire, be naked. <laughs> I guess I've still outlawed clothing. 
But god damn do I have wonderful stats and a lot of a lot of traits. That's too many. It should be said that uh, this man has absolutely maxed out two in steward and all three of the learning lifestyles. This guy is the most qualified king ever. But now we have to prepare. The realm is going to split like a gosh darn puff pastry. So we need to keep it together the best we can. It's less that we lose land. It's more that, well, all of these ones, I'm not probably gonna be able to hold them. The man taking over, he's alright. But, but disinheriting him could be a good option. If only I didn't have as many gosh darn children, huh? But you know what I do have? Gold and troops. I'll simply be a bit of a tyrant. Now what I'm worried about is that all of these areas... Could I do something very stupid? I was gonna say, could I buy a claim on my own land? Hopefully, and just hopefully, my son will be able to reclaim the land and bring everything back under control. We are so close to becoming Chakravarti. We almost completely control the now Lambakana kingdom, Lambakana empire. And getting the rest is just a matter of uh, clever wars and good strategy. My friends, I think it's time we just face the facts and go towards our death. It's been an honor. Afterlife, here I come. May I be reincarnated into something wonderful. May I become one with the earth. Well, Lama Kakua has died at the age of 80. His heart gave out before his mind. A conscientious man, he was renowned for his excellent skills and is finally chilling with that one ghost that kept pestering him. Lama Darasena sends the throne. Being very ambitious, many expect the realm to grow and prosper under his rule. Hey, that's pretty good. Long live the new Sabrat, and I live in the shadow of fame. One day, I will be used like you. Prestige must stress. Well, let's see how bad this situation is. The realm is intact, that's good to see. But I don't control all of these areas. My shad brother over here, Sean, Sean Daganga, rules this area. But he's both an adulterer and a smoker. I could revoke his title outright. It would cost me a bunch of tyranny, but I'll get that settled with. But it's clear to see that we have one more goal in front of us, and that is that to become Shakavarti. The Lambakana Sri Lanka Island adventure has continued in a way more violent way. Our troops are at the ready, fighting fiercely, and they have proven themselves on the battlefield, conquering most of India. Now we conquer the rest. My name is Goldfish, and I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay Sri Lankan, my dudes. Yeet!